Hello, quantum community. Welcome to our wonderful weekly conversations on love and relationships. In just a moment, I'll be joined by my dear ally and colleague, Sean Christian. Yolanda, hi. Welcome, everyone. So good to see you. As always, thank you for joining us. Thank you for carving out some time in your busy schedule to come and connect and commune on love and how we can have greater experience, uh, greater experiences of it in our own lives. Because love is the new currency and the return on our investment is priceless. It is the depth of love and meaningful relationships that we have in our lives that bring us the greatest fulfillment. Why? Because we are biochemically wired to bond deeply with one another. So for those of you that are going to be joining us in Malibu or Santa Barbara for these wonderful upcoming events, these programs, retreats, and in-person immersions, we are so excited to welcome you there. And it's wonderful to be getting the messages on all of our attendees talking about how excited they are to come and open and shift those places of limitation to transform the experiences of our past and open to a greater experience of love in the future. Great, here's Sean. So I'm actually on the road today in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's a beautiful day here. And we actually have trees in full bloom, which is incredible uh, compared to Asheville where I came from where everything is still just uh, waking up and you know this is such a powerful time right the season of spring where we're all waking up there's the energy of renewal and we are getting ready to not only plant seeds in our gardens right whether it's a window box or a big garden in the backyard but it's also time to plant the seeds of our intention uh, for what we want to create in the next season of our lives. Let's see, Sean, do we have you here? There you are. Hello. Aloha. <laughs> yes, I'm there. You. I'm here. I'm Welcome. Here. Yes, good to see you. I hear you talking about spring there. I'm kind oh. of seeing some oh spring. There's still snow capped mountains. But uh, on the lower, it's not so snowy Wait. somewhat. Yeah. <laughs> but it's I don't coming. have that. It's I don't coming. have any flower <laughs> at all, just inside. Just my oh, orchids are blooming. I'm taking care I of those. Orchids. Yeah. Yeah, I see those blooming beautifully. Hello, everybody. I see everybody out there bouncing in, saying hello. Aloha. Great to see you. Yeah. Aloha, Janet. Welcome, Yolanda. welcome, welcome. You out there. Uh, you know, always, so it's always so great, great Sean, here. to get the feedback Donna. from everyone coming to these lives with your <clears throat> questions and your comments and your gratitude. <clears throat> Right. We will be talking about gratitude today because it is one of the most powerful forces in the universe for us to be able to embody, to practice, to then further attract experiences to be thankful for. Isn't it interesting how that works? Hi, Deb from Pittsburgh. Welcome. Uh, 100%. I, I, this is I go to Karen. What's happening? Good to see you. South Africa. Great to see you. Um, yeah, gratitude is one of these things, and I, 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 we're going to go through, you know, disappointment and despair and just, you know, these things that, that, that life hits us, we're going to have it. But one of these go-to things, if you're just like, I am yes. a guy, I don't even know what to do. Just go to gratitude. It's going to be one of these things you're mm -hmm. like, thank you mm -hmm. for the kind words. Um, it's one of these things that I'm, you know, like, yeah, that's great if you're happy but to find gratitude when the world isn't all bright and shiny mm -hmm. that yes. is an art that is a gift and you cannot science that you i mean people are like oh no i can't. you can't feel despondent and grateful at the exact same mm -hmm. time you can vacillate of course right but you can't hold those two insane so if you focus on creating we'll get to that towards the end of this on creating gratitude and bringing yourself right here, right now, to the present moment of what you're grateful for. Easy to say when we're happy, but the practice, the habit of that will allow you to do it when you are in a state of despair, depression, desperation, disenchantment. All of those Ds. You know, all of these Ds that we talk about, we'll, we'll go through them. But, but yes, this is one thing, like if you just bopped in and bopped out, 
take mm. gratitude yes with you. because you know here's the thing there are actual structural changes biochemically in the brain that take place when we cultivate a consistent practice of gratitude. So we are going to share those with you towards the end, because one of the things that we really want to discuss today, and many of you have asked for this, have said, what happens when I've experienced so much disappointment in my past that I'm closed? <laughs> And one of the things, and I mentioned this for and those of you that might not have been in in the very beginning, once we have experiences of disappointment again and again and again, and we've all had them, what happens is they compound and compact and then further activate and attract more experiences to be disappointed about, sad about, right? And so the this becomes a pattern yeah. and not one of the patterns that we want to cultivate. And because we are biochemically wired in certain ways, once we have a pattern at the level of the brain and our mind, there's physiological response. There's interactions that happen that influence our decision making, right? That influence the way that we react to situations. And we know when we have certain reactions that you know, oh gosh, I'm just so disappointed by this experience. This isn't what I thought it was going to be. I really felt like this relationship was the one, that this was the love that I had been dreaming and desiring for my whole life. And now I'm hurt, right? So it's important to really remember in those moments that sometimes what we're reacting from is not only the disappointment of the moment of the experience that we're in, but the disappointment of the past. And, and I think that this is, you know, something that we collectively face. And I, I want to hear you weigh in on this, Sean, because, you know, I think this affects so many facets of our life and our relationships, whether you're looking for the one or you're in that relationship with your partner, your mate, your husband, or your wife. And you're like, how do we address this place of discontentment that we have with each other? Mm. Another great deed, discontentment. So true. A uh, lot of great things in there, by the way, for sure. Um, and just for, I'll just tap into this biochemical thing for sure, just so people have a little bit of perspective on this. Your body, in fact, has over the last three, 5,000 years over time or whatever, right, is designed to keep you alive and safe, right? Your brain, our brain, this, 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 this uh, brain that we have from millennia ago is meant to keep us alive so we magnify we absolutely get our brain magnifies the pain the disappointment and turns it into despair because you keep like a seed right so let's say you have a seed of disappointment well if you keep watering that seed of disappointment what's going to happen it turns into disenchantment turns into despair turns into perhaps if you just keep focusing on it it turns into depression that you are generating biochemically because your brain's like, we gotta be safe, we gotta be safe, we gotta be safe. It takes the power of choice and to understand how your brain biochemically is already just trying to keep you safe. And you go, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 hold on. Let me nourish something different, something. I've had 30 years, probably a lifetime, but very 30 years of practice of rejection, rejection, 100% feeling disappointment, feeling rejection. So, but going, okay, well, this is how I feel. And getting back to the root of why in the world, being curious, don't numb yourself. A lot of people like, oh, I'll just do that. I'll just tap out with some, some over-the-counter drug mm -hmm. or TV mm -hmm. or social media and, you know, just sort of veg out. So that's not a remedy for healing. That's a remedy for escaping. Absolutely. <laughs> We've, that's, Right? So you're still not dealing with the root of, let's just say, well, just to start with disappointment. Because I know how disappointment can turn into dejection, turns into depression, right? I've had enough uh, uh, repetition of disappointment that has constantly, I mean, that's my life. That's the career I chose, right? Certainly in the entertainment business. You get more losses and you get wins. That's the nature of the beast. Yeah. You can't handle it. <laughs> Don't get in it. Fact, right? But but let's get grounded in everybody else's life. You go, that's great, Sean. You have the practice of it. Well, how do I do it when I have this huge heartbreak in my life? Or I lost that job. 
I wanted, or I can't get that job. And I keep feeling, or I can't lose that weight. And I keep feeling dejected, disappointment. Okay, as long as you're aware, right then and there, what am I feeling? And don't magnify it, because your brain will go, oh my God, and how many, who have all, we've all done this, by the way. Oh, I'm so depressed. You're like, wait, are you depressed? Mm. Or are you just disappointed or disenchanted? Get perspective first. You can't give yourself the proper remedy if you don't understand and meet yourself right where you're honestly at. Because you have to ask yourself and give yourself perspective. And Cheryl um, really brought up a great point about getting her daughter not, not being able to, if I read that correctly, mm. not being able to see the gratitude in it. Okay, what is she focused on? And get an honest answer. So she may be like, oh my God, I'm so disenchanted with like the day, the present moment, being a kid, being a teenager, right? Just get an honest perspective. You can ask her, like on a one to 10 scale, like, where are you at? Are you disappointed? Are you depressed? Like, literally, just let's think about that. It's right? such a big so, question, okay. right? Well, to really be honest right? with ourselves, to take that honest inventory yeah. and allow our like, emotions to be present, not to rule us, not to dominate us, right? Right? But to be embraced. Yeah. So, you nailed it. You nailed it, uh, Cheryl. She's disappointed. Great. Did her boy? So let's just let's just take one tiny example. Do this for yourself in your own life. Where am I at? What's one of the D's that I'm at? Right? Where am I at? Um, okay. On a 10 scale, let's say disappointment. Let's say your boyfriend, let's say, you know, we'll take your daughter in his example. The boyfriend broke up with her. She didn't get a great grade. Let's say her boyfriend broke up with her and feels dejected, rejected. Okay. Wow. She may go, teenagers do this because they function from an emotional level. The brains develop it, you know, fully, not fully developed to like 25, right? So they deal with feelings, not a cognitive mindset. And I'm going to go in the weeds there, but okay. My boyfriend broke up with me. All right. Or let's say I lost a loved one or my parent or my, I've, you know, I lost my father. Right. And I was going through a divorce. So I had to get perspective and that's kind of happening all at once. But right. You know, these are, these are awful things that we go through in life, but let's get, first of all, perspective. But just ask her that in a real way, because, okay, then if she's like, well, it feels like a 10, you know, and you can think of some tragic circumstance. Well, then what would that be if you lost a loved one or if you lost a, a, an arm, a leg? And I've had friends who've mm -hmm. lost appendages, right? Like, let's get, what would that, what, would, what number is that? If you're at a 10 because you lost your boyfriend, what would be losing um, an arm or something? Let's say something really tragic, right? Well, that would be like a 12. Okay. <laughs> so you now you have a better perspective on losing your boyfriend. Well, I think perspective is so important because when we are in the mire, the muck and the immense pain and despair that comes from some of these experiences of disappointment and discontentment, dysfunction, right? We can go on with these D's, right? Of distortion uh, to many significant degrees. And yet when we can get perspective, when we can allow our feelings to be present for a moment, just to touch in, don't want to push it down because we know when we depress our emotions, what happens to our body, our biochemistry, right? That depression becomes a more powerful, palpable experience of life. And yet there are ways that we can bring grace into these places of pain within us. There are ways that we can cultivate simple and profound practices of gratitude to help balance our brain chemistry, to help us experience that sense of emotional upliftment. And one of the things that is so incredibly powerful is when we come together. When we come together in community with each other, our process of transformation, of elevation, is not only palpable, but it is accelerated. And that's why I, Sean and I are creating these numerous programs starting in California and then later in different areas because we bring that unified perspective of the masculine and the feminine, right? Because both are important. We have both within us, regardless of our gender. And both of those areas are called to come into a sense of balance for us to live not only our most 
harmonious life, but our most loving life, right? So when you have the perspective of the masculine and Sean's right a little bit more earthy and, and gritty, right? Which is so valuable. And I'm a little bit more spiritual and heart centered, right? In that way, also incredibly important for the healing practice. Well, then when we immer immerse ourselves in community with each other, we find like, oh, the gratitude is easier to access. The grace is easier for me to feel in my body, right? In my emotions. And then it gives me a completely different elevated perspective of life and what steps I need to take to become that change that I really not only want to be, but that I know is inside of me. And I think that's important because we all have something so special, so such a gift that only we can bring to this world. But how do we do that when we're in pain? How do we create the experience of love that we all long for, right? Because love is the universal language of humanity. It's what unites us as one. And when we come together, we grow together. And I think that, that is so important. And that's one thing I want to leave all of you with wherever you are in the world. Come together in community. When we come together, we grow together, we heal together, we elevate together, and that changes everything. Yes, that is, that is exactly it. And you are all here for a reason, right? You're here to share this moment. We're all here sharing this moment and trying to go, okay, how do we navigate those difficult feelings? Not bury them, not depress them down, right? We don't want to press them down. We want to invite them in, accept them, all of them, all of them. Mm. And now use them thing for a purposeful way. Well, where do we start? Grace. What is grace? A level of acceptance. This is simply accepting, right? You can take it in different areas. You get humiliated. You make a mistake at work. You make a mistake at home. We all do. We say and do things that really don't we don't really mean we're reacting or that you no know, what's what's where do i start with this level of acceptance mm. and grace holistic great and you you know you find support people like adora like myself like friends you know um who that you surround yourself with you know what are you doing what level of grace and gratitude are you doing every day you think about that you audit even how you think, feel, and act. Wow. You could go throughout your day. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. 90% of, hey, I'm feeling dis disappointed or I'm not enough, whatever. You know, you get to identify that. And then give yourself, if you have no other place to go, as we started in the beginning, a level of grace and gratitude. And then, for example, like Cheryl's example, like I can't, and when we're in the thick yeah. of it, it's hard to find gratitude. It's hard. But if you don't believe you are the creator of this moment, this life, I'm not talking about you, the uh, replacement of the divine creator. Yeah, I'm appropriate. In harmony, right? Mm -hmm. Universal energy, God, whatever you want to call it, right? There is this beautiful force within you and around mm. you that you get to harmonize with. Sean, that's with. so beautiful. Whatever you so beautiful. define it, right? right? If you don't have that, yeah. it's very difficult. Right? That's where that moment of grace just comes in. And you go, this is happening for me, not to me. Mm, I'm here to learn yes. and grow. Yes to that. Right? So those three, give yourself a moment of grace, gratitude, and know mm. that you are growing. So you're, you're actually substituting the D's that you're all feeling. You know, all, you define them. Just understand exactly where you're at. Don't magnify it. Catastrophize it is the word. And we make the pain bigger than yes. what it is and we minimize the beauty. That's why we, we don't feel the gratitude because we're like- I was just gonna it. say, Sorry, we go can ahead. transform the Ds to the Gs, right? And so through the invitation right. to invite grace into your life and to just in this moment, take a breath in of gratitude, even it's, if it's for the, the smallest thing, because the smallest thing becomes a greater and greater and greater thing with the stepping stone effect, right? And then suddenly you realize, oh my God, there's a litany of things that I'm grat uh, grateful for that I didn't even realize two minutes ago. So in this 
this moment, Sean, I am grateful for you for saying yes and coming in and co-creating these beautiful programs together that are elevating people's lives and their experience of love and living fully and freely. I thank you and I thank all of you for joining us today to listen in on these profound conversations. Amen to that. Thank you all. I appreciate this moment. I appreciate you and I appreciate each and every one of you who show up for yourself. Mm. I appreciate you. Thank Blessings you so and much. feel free visit us at thesoulinstitute.co for information on our wonderful retreats in mm -hmm. Malibu. And you can also schedule a discovery call with myself or with Sean. And on both of our websites, Soul Institute and Aloha Coaching dot com is that right sean aloha life coaching dot com yeah aloha. dot com aloha you can life find coaching. wonderful yeah, tools and techniques for <clears throat> your transformation so we can support you in the highest way on your best expression of life and love blessings and ciao for now there you go thanks bye, -bye.